If there was one port in 2025 I really disliked, it probably was Monster Hunter Wilds. Baffling textures, baffling GPU performance, but with free title update 4 just dropping, I thought it'd be interesting to see in this short video today whether or not it helps alleviate the game's issues. But first, these words from Rich. This video is brought to you by Digital Foundry and Cyber Power PC. Click on the link below to access Christmas savings on a number of Corsair Infinity gaming PCs, starting with the Infinity C5, pairing a Ryzen 5 8400F with a Radeon 9060 XT and 32 gigs of RAM. The Infinity C6 up specs to the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, the fastest CPU for gamers, along with the impressive Radeon RX 9070 XT. The Infinity C7 ramps up the specs still further with the monstrous GeForce RTX 5090 and WD Black SSD, all three offerings ship with a free game. A world-leading PC manufacturer with a 4.7-star Trustpilot rating, CyberPower PC is an official launch partner for PC component brands like Nvidia, AMD and Intel with over 20 years of custom building experience. A five-year warranty is offered on all of its desktops alongside lifetime technical support. Oh, and free UK delivery. Check the video description below for more details. Looking at the technical promises for the update, there are mentions of GPU and CPU optimization on PC here, but they are a bit unspecific. I'm mostly interested in improved GPU performance as the game is or was very heavy for looking so poor, and it definitely needs better texture streaming handling, in particular for 8GB GPUs. Pre-title update 4, you basically had the choice between awful medium textures or kind of okay but bad looking high textures, but with a lot of added stutters on an 8GB GPU. That is, unless you indulged in modding the game with uncompressed textures, but I covered that a few weeks back. Either way, there's not a lot of info about such improvements for title update 4 here in the notes. Getting straight into the game's intro with everything set to high on an RTX 3070 with no RT on at 1440p DLSS balance mode, I was kind of shocked as the main ground texture you see immediately in the intro just never streamed in when set to high textures. That left the terrain, trees, and much more looking like a texture mush into the horizon. These are the same settings as the pre-patch version, by the way, but importantly, the game is now no longer yelling at me saying that I am out of VRAM at high textures. It did do that in Title Update 3. So they've shuffled around the texture streaming to a degree, and the first impressions were honestly pretty negative. The full picture, though, over multiple scenes is a bit more mixed. Some textures stream in to much higher quality, while others might be a bit lower. The sail on the side of the ship in the intro, it's definitely higher post-patch on 8 gigs with high textures. The hot air balloon, higher quality post-patch. That kid's clothing, higher quality post-patch. So some stuff does look better, but the ground looking so awful in the intro, frankly, uh, just didn't look that great. I've also noticed an occasional late load of some textures here when set to high. That really didn't happen pre-patch. Instead, you got, of course, a lot of stutters. But what about medium textures? On average, medium textures are actually better than before. The tarp I showed off earlier, better looking on medium now. The book that I clowned on at release, definitely looking better now. Character textures for clothes can also be a bit better as we see here. These are smaller adjustments for sure, but the general texture quality is one that I would classify as better, but still not good. So they definitely changed texture streaming behavior and what you end up visually seeing. On high, I'd say it's kind of a mixed bag now, but on medium, it's definitely a win. While texture quality generally is improved here, I think one thing they did reduce patch on patch at the same settings are character geometry quality. If you look at the silhouettes on character edges, you can see that not everything is nearly as round as it was before. I don't think this is particularly noticeable usually. The texture improvements tend to override, but they are definitely attempting to try improve performance here at the same quality preset by turning some stuff down. Precisely about the boy we rescued in the vicinity. Entry to the region itself has been restricted for a thousand years. We thought it completely uninhabited. Any remnants of its ancient civilization rest solely in historical record. What about performance? 
Sticking with medium textures for now, at those settings I talked about earlier, we can see how the game post title update 4 has roughly an 8% GPU limited performance improvement in the game's opening cutscenes on a GPU like the RTX 3070. It wouldn't be game changing at all, of course, but it is nice to see. When textures are set to high on that same GPU, the improvement goes up to around 9% overall patch on patch, and the reason you can get that little 1% better on average is because we can see in purely GPU limited moments as before, there's no more frame time spikes associated with texture eviction and decompression. Those have been eliminated at these settings on Title Update 4 on 8GB GPUs. This markedly increases the game's frame time stability when high textures are set, and the game is decently smoother now as of this patch. That is a much more noticeable difference than the 8% increase in GPU limited frame rate in such cutscenes, I would say. Hard to park. Aye. The biggest overall improvement that Title Update 4 offers is actually in those settlement areas of the game. Pre-patch on an 8GB GPU like we see here at high settings on the RTX 4060, you would have the frame rate constantly grind down to a crawl periodically with terrible frame times depending upon where you'd look in such scenes. I would say this made the game unplayable on high textures on such GPUs. You could, of course, mod in uncompressed textures. That would prevent the incredible slowdown. But if you notice still, this area doesn't run particularly well regardless. It is topping out at around 50 FPS or so in the scene, with many dips below, just running around it on that RTX 4060. With the patch now and high textures enabled at otherwise the same settings, we can see how the periodic intense slowdown is just not happening anymore, which is awesome. But more impressive perhaps is the now 20% faster overall average frame rate than even the modded version on the left here. So while the game has an 8% GPU improvement in those intro scenes, scenes with many objects and characters like we see here have an even higher percentage improvement in this patch, 20%. That is very significant. This is great to see, and I'm happy it has happened. Though it must be said, with this new patch, you do have to contend with some texture pop-in that occurs in this area that will not really happen with the uncompressed texture mod. So there you have it, a short little update video on Monster Hunter Wild's title update 4. It does make the game lighter on the GPU in all scenes, and it makes it even lighter in those scenes with a lot of stuff going on, where the game was really at its worst. Medium textures look a bit better, but still bad I would say, and high textures are a bit of a mixed bag in this patch, some looking worse and others looking better. Though you will have to contend with more texture pop-in as of this patch. Stutters from decompressing assets though are at least now gone on high settings on 8GB GPUs, and I do look forward to other updates of the game, which according to their commitments should be coming in January and February with further improvements. If you enjoyed this short video, like, subscribe, ring the bell, help on Patreon, follow on Blue Sky, and as always, this is Alex, bringing you farewell and auf Wiedersehen!